What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven. This is Steven in Stereo and in today's video we're going to be diving into the Chapel Roan album The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. I just recently started reacting to Chapel and I'm having so much fun with her music so I'm so excited to dive into a full album. Now before we get into today's video I just want to plug my Patreon. I will have this video up if you're watching this on YouTube now as a full uncut album listening party on Patreon. That's where we don't cut anything out. We jam the entire album together. YouTube, I always have to chop it up for a little bit more pacing and for copyright reasons. So if you guys are interested in checking out that full album and you know people tend to like that experience, the link's in the description. There are over 130 album listening parties that you guys can actually check out. And last but not least, make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. I am uh, not reacting to Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl or Hot To Go. I just did videos to those actually. So if you guys wanna see my reactions to those tracks, I have two videos that I did, I think, this week on them. So make sure you guys go check those out. But I'm excited to dive in. The first track is called Femininomenon. Femininomenon. Let's do it. Same old story time again. Got mm. so close, but then you lost it. Should have listened to your friends and sex. He disappeared from the second that he Oh, the harmonies with that high voice. Oof. Make a bitch. It's a fan. Hit it like. Ooh. Get it hot. Make a bitch. It's a um, can you play a song with a fucking beat? Like Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Everything that I love uh, that I've listened to so far from Chapel is all coming to life right here already. Um, so one thing I've already noticed is I love her take on production. There is such an interesting twist on all these songs. They always have so much personality, almost to a point where like it, it's undeniably Chapel's music. And I love that so much. The ability in this modern age to make a unique sound for yourself. But even in what we just heard, I love that string section, that orchestra that brings in the song, but then brings in that that piano and we have chapel just really like you know giving us this ballad all of that's so cool then goes into that chorus and then she says wait bring me a song with a ballad." all that stuff like it just again reignites my my love for that personality in her music in just a handful of songs already I pretend to love this mother lying to your friends about how is such a guy I see like it's so fun to get a perspective right from you know the opposite right because let's put it this way like in these relationships especially in the situation you lie to uh, pretend that you like you know to like his mother to you know to want to be around his mother you pretend that he's like you know this great lover for you and all these things but maybe like that's not really like what's going on maybe you're just lying about all the things because you're following the societal like norm of a relationship and what it is but maybe it's not really what you want or at least maybe that person isn't really giving it to you the way that you need it you need that solid feminine energy dude come on this is fucking sick it's fun pop, but it's like upbeat dance, but there's like this rebellious side to it too. Ooh, this beat is so catchy. Okay, so I love this because um, what we did, Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl, I reacted to that the other day. And in that song, she's essentially saying like, you know, I, you know, here's this person I was, I, I was going to be with, but this dude is not who I want to be with. I want to be with, with a girl just like me. And I feel like this is kind of giving that same energy. It's why can't any man give me this love that I'm supposed to be feeling? You know, I, I'm having to lie about all these things with this person. And it turns out that maybe in this case, Chapel uh, just realizes that she needs feminine energy in her relationship. Uh, the, the, uh, the, per the people that she's been dating just aren't quite adding up to what she's really looking for. I love how much fun she has with the music. I feel like we get so constrained in these boxes of how music is supposed to sound and how it's supposed to be and produced and all these things. And I like that those boundaries are all kind of off the table when it comes to Chapel's music. Just in this song alone, the amount of times that she breaks the, the song, breaks the beat and everything just to be able to like, you know, 
hey, play a song with a beat. Like to have all those little breaks, those are just little things that add those characteristics. But I love that so much because it gives this very DIY and punk rock kind of feel to the music. All right, this next track is Red Wine Supernova. She showed me things I didn't know. She did it right there out on the deck. Put her canine teeth in the side of my neck. Hey! Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, before this even goes any further, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, you have these verses, you have all this personality coming through, right? And then also, you know, Chapel just reminds you those vocals are here as soon as the chorus or even this pre-chorus moment kind of comes in. I just like that you can like, you can be that talented and also still have fun. It's fun. It's fun. I like fun. I like fun music. I like, we all like fun, don't we? Come on. No <laughs> Long hair, right. no you bra. Just told me, want me to fuck you. Baby, I will, cause I really want to. Ooh. I just wanna eat. Okay, y'all, let's take it up now. Hey. <laughs> oh. Hey. Come on, that whole like last part right there. Hold on. That whole last part with those uh, backing vocals, come on. Yeah, I fucking love Chapel's music so much because even in this track, this track, I from what it sounds like, it's somebody that maybe she had a chance with and maybe she didn't really give it a shot or I don't know, maybe she like got too in her head and didn't realize what was there. And now realizing that that's what she wants and she wants to get to that moment where she can, you know, share that moment, experience that moment together. Um, but I love that, you know, it, it's kind of got this love ballad twist to it, especially when that chorus comes in. Uh, but the verse is being so much fun. And again, her breaking like the song, you know, to like have little shout outs or like little things before it transitions into a different part of the song. All that shit is so much fun to me. It's like uh, it's like Deadpool of of music i think like you're just breaking the fourth wall all the time which is fucking sick all right this is after midnight Ooh, that face oh shit Dude. Oh, dude. oh, dude, a fucking bop. Okay, hold on. I love this because I think, you know, regardless, uh, like, I, I get it. Like, everybody's growing up is going to be different. But there is kind of this moment where, where, like, there is that piece of you that, you know, maybe you are a quote unquote, like, good girl, good boy. You're like, you're like a good person. You haven't quite, um, uh become explorative right <laughs> you're not there yet and uh i think that there is this kind of moment when like the people around you your friends parents whatever you kind of get to that point where like you're kind of like going against the grain and you're kind of like choosing to do your own thing you're getting to the point where you're like you want to try your own things you want to go out and explore a little bit and i feel like that's kind of where chapel is in this song it's kind of saying like i get that there's you know maybe not like the the perfect time to do this or maybe you don't want me to do this but i want to go out and live this life i want to go out and do these things because all of this fun stuff all of this great stuff doesn't happen until after midnight you know allegedly like like all the best things they say doesn't happen until mi after midnight which is crazy because like as you get older you realize that kind of like all the worst shit happens after midnight but um yeah something to think about you know Hey, this is so vibey. Damn, I love the tone of her voice. Hey. 
Is this like, is this like a bi anthem? Like, is that why we're all celebrating? Like, I feel like I'm supposed to be celebrating in this song too. I feel like this is my anthem. I feel like this is our anthem. We should be fucking celebrating, right? Let's fucking go. Hey. Gonna be a freak in the club, baby. Vocal runs in the back, they're just going all over the place. So good. Yeah, I'm obsessed with this. She's fucking amazing. This is such a good song. It is so well written. It's got so many pieces that I love, including that pre-chorus. I love just what she does with her vocals leading into that chorus. That chorus, by the way, is literally pop, like dance pop perfection. It's got this little bit of like a disco element to it. Those bass riffs are funky and staying just so fucking real all over this. I love this track so much. I also feel like this is a really good song for people that um, are a little bit like hesitant to get their freak on, if you know what I mean. And I don't mean that in a way like, oh, just go out and hook up with people. Although if that's what you want to do, fucking do it, right? Just be safe. But I feel like this song has like a little bit more to it than that, where it's like, it's okay to just let loose. Like it's okay to just go out and like, be yourself your authentic self if you want to get your freak on that night don't fuck just go fucking do it right you know there's going to be a place for you especially in this day and age there's a community for everybody right and i feel like that's kind of what the song is about it's celebrating the idea of being able to go out and do those things kiss the boy uh kiss the girl if no one minds right if everyone is kind of like in that same vibe and everyone's just feeling the club and feeling that moment go out and catch that vibe even if it's just going to happen after midnight all right this next track which after explaining that last track, it is because I just had a lot of this. All right, this is coffee. Can't meet you for dinner at the Italian places where I met your family. Some words were exchanged. I, if I didn't love you, oh. it would be fine. I'll meet you for coffee. Only for coffee, no where else is safe. Every place leads back to your place. I love that Chapel's got this like storytelling element to her music too, and I feel like it's really shining in this ballad. I feel like uh I've noticed it in other songs, but it really lends itself well here to just talking about what it's like when a relationship is over, but you're still drawn to that person, even though you know you shouldn't be. And so the safest place in the world for you to go is to get coffee because anywhere else is going to lead you back into that apartment, back into that bed, back into that place where you're going to make, I assume, a mistake. But I also want to say, again, vocally, we're talking about a very well-rounded artist, and I'm saying that based on a handful of songs. This song, the whole delivery to this, while that storytelling element is there, there's just so much fucking talent to be... Uh, I, I've always said that, like, if I had the option, you know, I would listen to everything before I died. If there was like you could pick the one thing you could accomplish before death, I would just say I want to listen to all of the music at least once before I die. You know, technically you could kind of live forever, right? Cause if we have wine, say that you're sorry. Nowhere else is safe. Every place leads back to your Oh yeah. Every place leads to your we've done this before. Come on. Come on. Every place leads to your weave, like weave, like the weave of your love, but also we've done this before, like the two of us. Come on, did I just catch that? Is that sick? I'm thinking too much into that for sure. You know, you're having all these like dance club moments, you're having all these upbeat tracks, and then Chapel hits you right from the left side, boom, with a ballad, just like that. And I actually really love the placement of this because I feel like 
I feel like to show that, you know, this is Chapel's first album. So I feel like to show like what you're able to do in music to really like give a, a kind of like an introduction to you, the artist, I feel like it's really important to be able to showcase, you know, different styles like this. And I also love that a ballad from her just feels so authentic because her music has a level of authenticity. There's something about, again, that breaking of the fourth wall or, or little things like that, taking away some of the seriousness of the music. When you do that, you're able to be serious, but like it, it comes out in a very authentic way. Like it seems very fucking real and very personable. This song right here, absolutely. I have experienced this. I imagine that many people that have been in relationships, especially long relationships, have experienced something similar to this. And maybe not always is coffee. Um, sometimes it could be, hey, you want to meet up and, you know, talk about that thing? Or, hey, do you want to, you know, go yeah, get food at that place you like or it doesn't matter if you, you can't this is why like it's so impossible to have like ex relationships that sometimes you want to be friends with again if you had like a long relationship and you had a ton of feelings there to the point that you can't even go get coffee without ending up at their apartment those feelings are too real and if you're unable to find a safe space to be able to like navigate that relationship any way that doesn't lead back to that apartment uh good luck but i imagine that that's very hard to do and i think that's exactly why we're getting that here there's this pain of not being able to be with this person anymore because you know it's not right but you still want to be able to spend time with them but all roads lead to the wrong situation all right this is casual I'm still hanging around. Fuck. I've heard so many rumors that i'm just a girl that you bang on your couch i thought you thought of me better I love what she says at the end, baby, get me off again if it's casual now. Because the idea being that if it's casual, that it's just a hookup thing, right? So if we're knee deep in the passenger seat because you're eating me out, but then we're casual. The idea being like, why are you taking me to meet your mom? Why are you taking me to do, to do all this stuff if we're just a casual thing? And it's also got to be, it's frustrating to be the other person as obviously, you know, she's stating here like, you know, I'm finding out that I'm just this person that you bang on the couch, but I'm over here thinking that we've got this real relationship considering the things that you're doing. Some people can be pretty sketchy. Be deep in the passenger seat and you're eating me out as a casual Oh, I'm gonna learn those words. You fucking better believe it. Mom invites me to her house in Long Beach as a casual I thought I was going to have it that time. God damn, Chapel fucking just goes in so hard. And I feel like it, it is some of the most like relatable lyricism I've heard in a long time. I feel like it just takes me back to like high school and then like right after graduating and kind of like those years where you're just like figuring yourself out until you, like into your 20s i guess you're always kind of figuring yourself out to be honest but this song really gives me that vibe and at the same time um and, and i'm only saying that just because things that i experienced in my own relationships and stuff but what i really love about this too is that you can really understand the tension point that she has in this because like she says like you know, we're out to dinner and I fucked you in the bathroom and your parents are at the table. The whole thing being like, yeah, in a way you're kind of hooking up like it's casual or you're hooking up like you're like a friends with benefits thing. So you're, you know, going out to dinner, but you're kind of being, you're being naughty. You're being adventurous, little voyeurs. Right. But then like at the same time, you also have to recognize that like you're doing relationship shit too. So like, this is that hard point where people always want to like everybody thinks they can have this friends with benefits relationship and that it, it, you know it's always going to work out and i'm sure for some people that probably does but like w when you start like going to dinner with other people's parents and like i don't know like taking vacations and just doing the things that people in relationships do but then you're also hooking up you're in a relationship like fuck like it just happened you know and i feel like if if you find out that you're just casual but you think it's a full-on relationship obviously as chapel does here there's obviously a big problem so i fucking love this song so much and i could literally talk about her lyricism forever just because i love again 
the just very like real and raw side of it like i like that it's like somebody that you know telling you stories but they just do it in a way that's so like sonically beautiful okay my kink is karma Fucking go. Wait, I fucking love that. I love, well, I mean, okay, there's like two sides. I love the lyrical side of this or kind of like just the idea behind it. Obviously, if if you are sticking around to watch the downfall of somebody else, that's probably not like the best mental state for you to be in, but who am I to judge? Um, but I love in this song that the idea of like sticking around to the point that it almost seems like you're keeping tabs on somebody because you love them and you like you're obsessed with them but what if you're just like no i just get off on the downfall of you because of everything that we went through together like i like the idea of that hey <laughs> I'm feeling you know myself. Caught and you're getting pissed off. It's getting me off. Dude, that's a fucking banger right there. I don't know what all of the singles are on this. I mean, I know Hot to Go and Super Graphic, uh, but I don't know like what the other singles are. But that's a banger for sure. I don't know, but I would definitely feel like that's something that I would want in rotation on a playlist. I'm just saying Spotify or whatever. That's a good one. I feel like people need to be jamming the song. That's going to be the one I share like ASAP because I feel like that's a fucking banger. I just what I really like about it is I feel like it's a really good um showcase of what chapel's music has to offer like starting just with the lyricism i love the idea behind being in a relationship with somebody that then goes south but you like just because that relationship's over doesn't mean life's over right you still have all that shit that you either lived through went through whatever the case may be and so now you're just waiting for your comeuppance you like the idea that karma may at some point exist and come back around. And so you are going to be there to watch the downfall of this person. And not only are you going to be there to watch, but it is going to be something that literally gets you off. You cannot wait for that moment. It is going to be the thing that drives you and motivates you just to watch that person fall. But at the same time, you know, so you get those lyricism or you get that lyricism, you get this really awesome instrumental, this super upbeat, cool 80s plug synthesizer had, you know, a lot of bass kind of going on there and this really awesome chorus all while showing these different ranges of Chapel's music. So I feel like this is a really cool song to show people who have not otherwise listened to her music. Okay, this next track is Picture You. Man, she could really do everything, Step can't she? Off my pretty dress, down my chest, when I think of you, you should be. Oh, she puts so much emotion into her voice in this. That harmony, come on. I'm getting close now. Do you picture me? I picture you. Am I in the frame from your point of view? Oh, shit. Look at that little bit of a twist, right? Well, and I also like that there's, hmm, there's kind of pieces to this. So, one, you look at this like a picture you, it's this relationship, you love somebody, right? But then picture you like maybe the things I do to you because I'm so in love with you and I'm so attracted to you, I'm so drawn to you that when I picture you, I can't help myself but do these things. But then I also, because of that doo-wop sound and it having that little bit of like, you know, uh, vinyl distortion when it first started, it kind of gives me this feeling that you don't want to think, you don't want to know the things you do when I picture you. It seems like it's more sinister maybe, like, like, maybe things didn't work out and because they didn't work out and I'm having to recall these memories with you and I picture you in them, maybe I'm whooping your ass, you know? You never know.
dude, that is so good right there. Man, I can't even decide if I'd rather hear like the up-tempo dance tracks or the ballads from Chapel. I guess it's great that we get like we get the option to choose, but I it's like I, I can't I don't even know what my preference is because on one hand I love the like upbeat dance stuff. I have so much fun with just like up-tempo pop, even if it's sad or any of those things. Like I just fucking love that. But like there's also something like really, I don't know, deep about her voice, that vulnerability, that emotion all tucked into those vocals delivered in those ballad styles that fucking hit on a whole different level, especially with a track like this that I feel can have multiple meanings. I just, I don't know, there's something really cool about that. And I feel very drawn to these styles from her. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is I'm a pretty big fan of everything I've heard so far and um, I should listen to y'all more often. You tell me exactly what I should be fucking listening to. So, all right, this is Kaleidoscope. Everything is fine. I guess we could pretend we didn't cross a line. Mm. But ever since that day, everything has changed the way I write your name, the cursive letter. Whenever it may. I just like that right there. The way I write your name, the cursive letter A, like that storytelling mixed with like just such a such a personal fucking approach to lyricism, like rather than write that, you know, that more broad line that you could have wrote, like, you know, the the way I write your name, it's never been the same. It could have been something like that, but it's like the way I write your name, the the cursive a like that is so fucking specific so good i will understand and it'll all be fine just go back to being friends and love is a kaleidoscope how it works on that you can like hear that broken sound that vulnerability there's just so much emotion going in right there and there's been this push in music that i've loved where it's just it's been like over the last like decade maybe even more where i feel like people are just more and more in touch with their emotions they're more willing to write you know more specifically about themselves instead of just broad topics and though we find those broad songs and, and we find that they are accessible to us and we plug them into our lives it's so cool that artists are willing to put their own specific you know the cursive a like put their specific life in these songs and then we get to kind of like learn because of what they've lived through oh even just in the production just hearing that like kind of like tape delay distortion thing Oh my god, I fucking, I'm just, I'm so here for this. That whole section, I love where those vocals go. It's so beautiful, and especially in a song that is as beautiful as this. Again, right before the song, I hyped up those ballads, and I got another one right here, and I love this so much. There's a sadness to this, though. There's that, there's a sadness to it where it feels like she's having to, she's having to say, I love you so much, I'm willing to let you go. And, and sort of the sadness that kind of comes with not knowing what happens there. But I love the metaphor of love being like a kaleidoscope. I don't believe that I've ever heard that metaphor made before in music. And I, lo I love that because kaleidoscopes are very interesting. They're very trippy. And I feel like if you liken it to that, you know, love can be very trippy. Love can be very confusing. But when you look at all the colors at the same time, though it's trippy and confusing, it's also very beautiful and very special, even though you don't understand it. Love is confusing as fuck. So are kaleidoscopes. But I just, I, to me, that is great fucking songwriting. I don't know. Who, what, who am I? What do I do? I just make YouTube videos. Okay, this is Pink Pony Club. I'm having wicked dreams of leaving Tennessee. You send a Monica. I swear it's calling me. Hmm. Will make my mama proud. Oh, 
I'm learning these lyrics right here. Let's dance this one. We all gotta go to the Pink Pony Club now. I don't know if the Pink Pony Club's actually a place in West Hollywood or if the Pink Pony Club is a made up thing, but um, either way, uh, it sounds banging. Hey! I just don't know what the Pink Pony Club is though. Chapel's got everything. You want guitar solos? We'll give you guitar solos in the middle of an 80s fucking power ballad. Synth pop melody moment. Maybe not so much power ballad so much as just synth pop and perfection. Uh, Yeah, what the fuck? What a banger right there. I feel like it's a drag anthem. I don't know. I don't know much about um Chapel Roan's like, life growing up. So I don't know if she's from Tennessee. I don't know if that was a specific song about her, but it kind of felt like it could be sung from the perspective of of somebody who leaves that southern place in Tennessee to go to a place where all the boys and girls can be queens. And that just to me sounds like it is going to be a great fucking time. So I love the vibe of this so much. And again, you get a guitar solo in the middle of this 80s synth banger. And I love that so much. And again, the vocals are incredible. All lending to all the things I love, which is that she knows how to bring a vibe. It doesn't matter if it needs to be sad, if it needs to be fun, upbeat, and happy. Chapel's bringing it, and that's exactly what we got there. And I imagine we're getting it here. This song is naked in Manhattan. Hey. Don't touch. I'm never crossing the line. So I pushed you down a million times. Gators in the summertime. Boys suck, and girls I've never tried. And we Boys suck, and girls I've never tried. Oh. Okay, wait, I, so many things I love right here. First and foremost, I love the perks that are used in the, uh, like the percussion choices used in that chorus. All the little like, wing, wing, like zings, little noises that are being made because we're essentially talking about, uh, you know, Chapel is singing about somebody experiencing their first moment with, with a girl, a girl experiencing their first moment first moment with a girl and and i love that because the whole time she's singing about this she's saying like you've tried so many times and you know i've always pushed you away because you know I've, but i wish you knew that i this is how i'm feeling about you the idea being like i always kind of wanted it, but i was too scared to try it but like now i'm in a situation where i want to end up naked in manhattan i've never tried it let's make it happen <laughs> Love New York. Great bass riff for that. Such high energy production on these songs, man. This is so fucking good. Yeah, Chapel's literally the vibe right now. That's all I gotta say. I fucking love this song. I love the idea of of singing about knowing that you've had the curiosity for so long and having somebody who was willing to always like be there and and give you that experience or wanting that with you, but you always being too nervous and pushing them away and all those things. And as time leads on, you finally get to a point where you are there, you are willing, ready, and able to finally experience this moment. And I think that everything in this song catered to that feeling. I like that they are able to capture what these emotions are like. I like the, the zaniness of it, including the chorus where there's like, there's like weird, like little, that, these little sound effects that are being used and stuff all to kind of show like it's this quirky moment where you've waited this whole time and you want to make the cinematic moment where you're naked in Manhattan and who better to deliver that song than fucking Chapel. So, all right, this next song is California. I stretched 
You know, this is the thing, though, is I feel like I feel like so I grew up in, in Houston. I grew up uh, in a smaller town, um, but I also lived in Vegas a lot. And I remember like living in Vegas and feeling like on top of the world, you know, at times I feel like, you know, it felt larger than life to be able to have access every day to stuff to something that people traveled so far to be there. And I feel like when you're there, like you you kind of like take it all in. Right. But like every time I was there, I would always miss my hometown. I would I would miss the seasons. I would miss the rain. I would miss, you know, the old, the old, like everything being old and everything like actually being dated and weathered. And I feel like everything in in Vegas or in California, anything on the West Coast is always like brand new and always like everything had to be brand new. And it almost became so superficial at times. So I totally get what she means by like wanting to even now, like as an adult, like when we you know, me and my wife chose to buy a house. Like I live like in the middle of nowhere. Like I could have lived in any city and I pitched, I live in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's because you do get to a point where you just want to go back to those things that you love and you miss, even though you wanted to, you know, it doesn't mean that you're failing because you, you know, you didn't like it in California. You didn't make it in California. You didn't feel like it was right for you. It's not a fail at all. Dude, I kind of see like multiple meanings with that one. Uh, so first, I love the ballad style. You already know that. Her vocals in this are fucking incredible. So much power, vulnerability. I can say it over and over again. It's not like a broken record. Doesn't matter. Jesus. Like, it's so fucking good. But I feel like the song has kind of a couple meanings. Because on one, it kind of feels like she moved to California thinking that it would be this magical place. And maybe it is for some people. But for her, it wasn't. And she kind of missed home. Um that could be like a base level, but I also feel like there's a relationship piece to it because so many of these songs have had this relationship piece to it. It also makes me kind of realize that maybe she was in a relationship and when that relationship ended, she moved to California to kind of get away from that person and kind of figured maybe while I'm out in California, maybe I can prove to them that I am like, I am like going to do something or I am going to you know do something that they're proud of. And then like, you know, you don't love it or like it doesn't work out and you have to come back. And I, I think you're dealing with the failure of a lot of things. It's like, Am I failing just because of not being able to make it? Am I failing because, you know, uh, I wasn't able to make this person proud that I really wanted this relationship with any of those things. Um, but I think there's something really beautiful, though, even though there's a sadness here, there's beauty in your hometown pulling you back in because it's true that like when you see pictures of the West Coast and New York and all these things, and New York's like my favorite city. So like, come on. But like when you see all these things. These, these pictures, they tell one story, but being in that place is a different story. And for people that are born in a, in like LA and grew up there, that is home, right? You grew up in New York, you're born there, that is home. But like if you're born in the Midwest, you're born in Missouri, and then like you relocate, but maybe you lived your whole life somewhere, it's really hard sometimes to uproot. Sometimes those roots that you have run deeper than you think. So I feel like that is what we're kind of talking about here. All right, it's the last track, Guilty Pleasure. Oh, I love those vocals in the back too. I was wondering where she was going to take the guilty pleasure part, but I get it. New play on it. You give me guilty, guilty pleasure. Oh, wow, since you turned up the dial, so shame. 
which by the way like it is so cool to like be in a relationship with somebody or like be dating somebody or or whatever where like you feel that way about them like just like where something so simple as trying on jeans can be so seductive for you um you know the idea being is sometimes our brains are so like fried by just how much like sexual content kind of exists it gets to a point that like it kind of numbs you to things um and i and i feel like the fact that we can on just a base level still be so attracted to somebody without having to it doesn't they don't you don't always have to see them naked to be attracted to them i feel like she nails it on the head with that because when you have that in a relationship i feel like that's very strong it's a very strong attraction with somebody i can't wait to listen to this album again i need to learn all these lyrics i want to sing this in the car There's just so much singability. Literally a fucking vibe all the way through. I just love that this song has like such a mood to it with it being a song about enjoying that pleasure that just happens to be so good that it makes it feel like it is a guilty pleasure. Um, and at the same time, you're also just doing it to the point that it just feels guilty. It feels naughty. And I feel like whenever you can be with somebody and you have that strong attraction, that is so beautiful. I also love the the like sporadic nature of this instrumental. I feel like where this song starts out and then where the timing like hits and it randomly drops into this next part. It's so interesting to me. It like the, the thing about this album that I'm learning is like. I was always on my toes. I didn't really know what to expect next. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that Chapel uh, really does like break the kind of norms in music. I appreciate seeing such a, like a punk rock kind of side to a, like, you know, a pop approach. Like, I think it's really cool. I like to hear that side of like breaking the standard algorithm and composition of writing a song to like, you know, say, hey, bring in the beat. Hey, do this. Hey, do these things. All that, it seems so simple. It's not like you had to go crazy in a, in a studio to be able to pull something like that off. You're not breaking, uh, you're not like rewriting history by doing these things. But it's it's the the fact that all of these things feel like if I was friends with Chapel, I feel like I'm, I'm seeing her personality on the album. And that's why I, I feel like everything is so authentic and personal is because it feels like if I knew who this person was in real life, this would be the kind of person that they were. And I'm just personally a fan of having that much fucking personality. I love Chapel's voice so much. The ability to write these songs that have so much like realness to them, but then deliver them with these vocals that hit a different style in almost every single song. Like talk about a sampler to really show people what you're capable of. It's the way this album in just one listen shot so high up on my list of albums of the year. And this is just the first listen. I'm just so into this. I love the personality in these songs so much. I like that uh, Chapel is just putting her life out there for us. The the amount of love she has for women is beautiful to me. And I love that she's even like discussing her, her, pro, her like issue with that in this a little bit, just, you know, the idea of like, well, I've been with men and I've been dating men and I've been wanting to try a girl, but I haven't and, and, like all the things that are kind of surrounding that. And then obviously the, you know, dealing with maybe losing a relationship with a man, but then also falling in love with a woman or falling in love with women kind of all happening at the same time. Like at least her understanding that that's what she there's just a lot going on here, right? And I love that she so openly expresses that. There's enough specificity in these songs to pinpoint probably who they are about for her. But at the same time, there's enough like broadness that you can plug these songs into your own life. And I love that. But I also just love that vulnerability. There's a piece to it where while we're having fun and we're, you know, we, we got these like pop up tempo anthems and stuff like that. We are also talking about very real shit at the same time, but doing it from a very personal space, um, which I think is a lot of fun. To me, the the real like the meat of this thing are these ballads. I feel like the two singles that I heard, which were super graphic and hot to go, those songs that made me feel like this entire album was gonna be very upbeat, like pop centric, and it is, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of that here. But I think the singles tell only a part of the story. I think that Chapel as an artist, there's a lot more to her in what I heard through this album than what those singles really show. So I don't know what other songs were led as singles. So don't like, I could be wrong here, but 
I just feel like you definitely have to listen to the record, which is why I love doing album reactions so much. This right here is why I do it, because this is how you end up with favorite artists. If more people sat down and just listened to full records of artists before making any judgments about them, I have a feeling that a lot more people would have a much more expansive uh, musical knowledge. Now, I can't say that everybody has the fucking time to do that. I'm very fortunate to do what I do and then I get to do this. But if people had the opportunity to do that, I think they would get to discover a lot. And and honestly, like I think they would do a lot of healing for themselves. I know I personally have done a lot of healing for myself because of music. But you know, when you think about an artist like Chapel Roan, a lot of people have asked me to, to react to her. And I'm so excited that I finally did. And I'm glad that it was like single, single, single right into a record because I feel like I needed to hear all the deep cuts on this because now I'm just like, oh my God, what a well-rounded artist. So much to experience in one record. And honestly, like it's 14 songs, right? But the other two songs that we didn't do because we already did them with 14 songs, I feel like we experienced so much about her. So I'm so excited to check out more. I know there's an EP. I saw some comments that were hit or miss on if I should do a reaction to it. So let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested. But I feel like with all the talk of Chapel and with this record coming out last year, like maybe I'm here at the right time. Maybe we're going to be doing this and we're going to be doing a rollout for another album. So I'm so excited about the possibility of that. But now that we've done an album reaction, I am looking forward to, to checking out some of the live performances as I've heard those are very good as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram. Also, if you guys want to see the full uncut album reaction party slash listening party where we just jam the entire album. I don't cut anything out like this YouTube version. You can check that out at the link in the description as well as over 130 other albums. If you guys are interested, I love y'all so much. I will see you in the next one. Peace.